Recently, I discovered a book in my local bookstore called Your One Wild and Precious Life, written by Dr. Maureen Gaffney, and this book fascinated me. So I bought it, and I read it within a few days, and this changed how I see life. And what she does in this book is she deconstructs the nine major life stages and now what I want to do in this video and in the next one is I want to deconstruct and share each of these major life stages and what you can take away from this, what you can learn about yourself and life. So in this video, I'm going to break down the first four life stages, which is from zero to 18 years old approximately. And then in the next video, we're going to go from 18 to the end of your life. And if you think like, yeah, I'm over 18, why should I watch this video? Well, you're going to learn so much about yourself. So I highly recommend that you stick around till the end of this video to get the full benefits of really understanding what each life stage is all about and understanding your own story. So the first life stage is infancy, obviously. This is from zero to two years old. And this is a stage where you form an attachment bond. And what Dr. Maureen Gaffney has deconstructed for each life stage, there is a development task. A task that you need to master. And if you don't master it, you kind of stay stuck in that stage. So the first development task is to trust or to mistrust, which is, do you form a secure attachment with the people close to you? your parents. And what she says in the first year, your relationship with your mother is vitally important to your attachment bond. And then in the second year, the attachment you form with your father makes a tremendous difference whether you trust in yourself, in the world, that the world is good, that it is safe, or whether you are more anxious or avoidant. Those are the three major attachment styles. If you want to learn more about this, I did an entire video deconstructing the attachment styles. I'll link that up down below. But there are three attachment styles. Secure is the one you want to have, which is when you develop a secure attachment styles, your relationship with other people is based on trust, based on the assumption that they are there for you, that they care about you that they will be there for you when you have a difficult season. And this is formed in early childhood, but of course you can do something about it later. But the first developmental stage task is to form a secure attachment style. And whether you are successfully doing this or not, depends a lot about do you have the courage, the bravery, the confidence later on in life to go for what you really want. And if you feel like, man, I don't really have this, then it's time to go through that developmental task again. So you can work on that and improve it. And that's the purpose of all of this. This is to give you awareness of, oh, this is what could harm me where I end up in self-sabotage. So the purpose of this is to bring awareness to how you live your life and why you live your life the way you live your life. For example, if you don't form a secure attachment style, maybe you are avoidant, you often only trust yourself. You often don't open up to others. You often try to do everything yourself because you've learned that other people are not reliable or trustworthy or that they're going to talk bad about you behind your back. And when you develop an anxious attachment style, you often are over-reliant on other people. You are reliant on their emotional support to an extreme extent. And you often have a lot of drama in your relationships. So that's the first life stage, goes from zero to two years old. And the main developmental task is to trust or not, to mistrust. The second developmental stage is early childhood, which goes from two years to six years old, approximately, of course. And here it is about autonomy or self-doubt. If you've 
learn a little bit about the stages children go through, then you know that around two to three years old, children can get really like, not aggressive, but they have their will and they need to have their will. And that is actually a good thing because throughout that process, children develop the autonomy, the trust in themselves and the courage to go out and try and experiment and test. And if their desire for autonomy is stifled to an extreme extent, they are going to live in self-doubt later. They don't trust themselves. They don't trust that they can do something. They don't have that courage and confidence. And what she says is, if children learn that they don't get what they want, they settle for something less. They settle for something that they can get, which later in life makes you settle for something that you might not want. So this stage is super important. It's all about developing autonomy, becoming a little bit more independent. Now, of course, as children, you're always dependent on your parents, but you become more free, more independent. You go out into the world on your own. But if you're not able to do so because you may have overprotective parents or very over-disciplined parents, like parents who don't let you do anything because they have to discipline you all the time, then your sense of autonomy is stifled. And again, this might hurt you later down the road. The third developmental stage is middle childhood, which is from seven to 11 years old. And the key developmental task here is belonging or isolation. Belonging or isolation. Belonging meaning, do you develop a peer group, a circle of friends that are going to be there for you and that you're going to be there, you really form deeper bonds that go beyond what you, the relationships you have when you're like little. I mean, little children from zero to two, they don't have any friendships. Like they play with other children, but there's not a really deep bond. Then from two to six, they develop friendships, but they're not that deep. But in that time from 11, seven to 11, you really develop depth in your relationships. And if you successfully do this, you have a feeling of belonging, a feeling of connection, which of course is super important for your confidence and your motivation later in life. And then the fourth key life stage is adolescence, which then is from 11 to approximately 18 years old. And here the key develop developmental task is identity or confusion. It is all about finding yourself again. In that time, you define who you're going to be consciously for the first time. I mean, before, you have a sense of who you are, but you don't question it. You don't question, who am I? You don't question, is this really what I want? But here, when you do it right, you kind of find yourself. And one thing I found really interesting that I want to share here is, you have that attachment style and it matters in every stage that you have. But in adolescence, for example, even if you have a secure attachment style, you could temporarily become anxious or avoidant. That is just a temporary change that is not permanent. The changes later as you progress into the next life stage. So for me, for example, this was true as a teenager, I was very anxious. How are they going to react? Are they going to like me? Are they going to reject me again or bully me again? I was very anxious. And as I learned about the attachment, I never was really sure. Am I anxious or secure or maybe avoidant? I wasn't sure, but then I learned this and this made it clear. I temporarily went into an anxious attachment style, but this is not who I am. I have a secure attachment style. So this is one thing I wanted to share with you. Again, if attachment style sounds like, what the heck is that? Then watch this video right now on attachment one-on-one. -on -one. So you really learn what really drives your entire life, your relationships. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video in which we're going to break down the next five stages.